Bonjour! This is Aaron from Aaron Gone Traveling. So today I'm going to be talking about Athens. Athens is one of my bucket lists when I was traveling in Europe. Another reason why I really wanted to visit Athens was because I found a super cheap flight from Athens to Melbourne through Singapore and it cost like 320 Australian dollar or something. After living in Paris for a while, I was really broke, so I needed to go on that flight. I know three days is not enough to fully discover this amazing city, but that's all I had. So for me to do that, I wanted to get on the earliest flight from Barcelona to Athens. There was also the cheapest flight, you know, because they make you wake up at 3 a.m. I bought that ticket, woke up for that flight, fully thought that I was gonna get a good night's sleep in the plane which I was so wrong because I was seated next to a guy that snores so much until the earth trembles uh, that was exaggeration the only thing that trembles was my heart with fear I couldn't sleep at all and he wasn't even like beside beside me and we had an empty middle seat and he was at the window seat I was on the aisle seat he snores so loudly and I just I was too polite I was too scared that he might take me down in the plane so I didn't wake him up I became the sacrifice that couldn't sleep for two hours straight so I arrived in Athens without any sleep slightly cranky I just like okay let's just get to the city center and we'll see what we do there I got on a bus because that was the cheapest way to get into the city center I already booked for a night at the hostel in the city center that cost like eight euros which was great for my wallet it's not check-in time yet when I was just about to go out she told me oh your bed is ready so I was like okay let me just settle down so I took my bags went to my dorm which was second floor and then I looked at my bed and I'm like girl you're too beautiful but we can't be together because if I sleep now at 10 a.m. I'm not gonna be able to sleep tonight if I'm not gonna be able to sleep tonight I will go out and find alcohol so that was the TED talk that I have to do to myself every day to rationalize the bad things about alcohol every day so I decided to just take a quick shower, get ready and go out because if I stay here for more than 5 minutes, there's a goddamn chance that I'm not gonna go out. I went to the receptionist again to find out what's the cheap stuff, what's the free stuff, give me all the deeds. And she gave me a list of all the restaurants that I could go to, all the street eats, all the hikes that I could do for free, all the attractions that's like 1 to 5 euros. I decided to just follow this list for 3 days. Walking out of the hostel, going into the city, going into the city centre, I look at the city, the very first impression that I have about Athens is that it is so old. I look at the buildings around me and I'm like, are these buildings gonna go crumbling down on me? <laughs> is it gonna fall? It is very old with buildings that are somewhat refurbished. The people give me a very relaxed and chill vibe. Maybe it's because they receive too much sunshine. They are very happy out and about smoking their cigarettes, very chill, watching people, sitting out at the plaza. I find it really nice to have some superficial kindness towards me when the waiters and waitresses were greeting me and were asking how my day was, was asking if my food was good. And I'm like, oh, this is a lot of kindness to me. I haven't felt that since living in Paris. <laughs> So I was already in Athens and one of the biggest reasons why I wanted to go to Athens was because I wanted to see the Acropolis. The Acropolis is one of the most famous, if not the most famous attraction in Athens. Not going to the Acropolis is like not going to Eiffel Tower in Paris. I went to the Acropolis fully knowing that there's gonna be an entrance fee. I wanted to know how much it cost to give myself a mental preparation of how much damage it's gonna cost to my wallet. I went on the internet, searched it up and it was 30 euros and I I was fully ready to pay that 30 euro because being one of the most historical monument in the world and then I saw there's like for university students it's free and I'm like I'm a university student the university has to be in the EU and I'm like okay there's a hurdle right there so you know from my hostel to the top of the hill which is the Acropolis it's around 25 minutes walk and I started walking thinking in my head with all the scenarios with what the receptionist at the Acropolis is gonna ask me. She's gonna ask for my student card, which I have. She's gonna ask where I'm from. She's gonna ask where my university is located. And I have all this dialogue and conversations play out in my head a hundred times just because I want to get in for free. I practiced and practiced and practiced. 25 minutes seems like 2.5 minutes. I arrived, there wasn't a long queue because it was in March where there's not a lot of tourists in Athens anyways. It was my turn. I turned up and she like, 
Hey, and I'm like, hey, I'm a student. Can I get a student ticket? And she was like, oh, okay, here you go. And I was like, girl, give me some challenges. I worked 25 minutes to make sure that this ticket is hard earned. And she like, oh, no, no, here you go. Of course I didn't say that. I grabbed the ticket and ran. <laughs> There's no way I'm saying that to lose my ticket. Because if she goes like, where's the student card? And I'll be like, hey, here it is. And if they go like, oh, where's this university? And I'll be like, oh, so I'm doing an exchange program in Paris. I live in Paris. And which is not false, I didn't lie. But she didn't, she just gave it to me. Maybe she just wanted to get rid of the line and go home and sleep. <laughs> anyway, it's very kind of her to just give me the ticket straight away and without questioning me. And don't get me wrong, I was ready to pay 30 euros for the Acropolis. It was a great sight to see. There's a lot of refurbishment that's going on with the money that people pay to enter. That's not my money. A lot of statues, a lot of rocks, and you get to see the city from above, all the discovery that I've made, all the preservation, all the uh, amphitheater and the pillars, and it was just so amazing. Like, people built this from thousands of years ago. Another good thing about going to the Acropolis in March is that there's no human beings over there. Great photo opportunity. I mean, you can still see one or two human beings running around. After going to the Acropolis, there's a hill that gives you a hawk eye view of the whole of Athens. I was amazed. My jaw just dropped. Athens is a sprawling city. It is so big. It's enormous. It stretches out as far as your eyes could see. So I'm like, oh, I feel like a Greek god. I now know why the Acropolis is built here because the people, I mean, the kings want to see what the peasants are doing. You know, you feel powerful standing on top of a hill. And I saw a few people like flexing their muscles, taking off their clothes and like doing push-ups to make sure they make a good photo for Instagram. I'm just like, do not destroy it for me. So I went down the hill. I saw a few buskers. They were playing a kind of traditional instruments with people singing and I thought it was incredible that a member of the audience can join the busker and make some money as well. And I saw many, many cats. So I went to one of the restaurants that's recommended by the receptionist because I was hungry after that hike. <laughs> that was only a 25 minute hike. And that's where I met true love. Suvlaki. What a sexy great name. <laughs> so obviously Suvlaki is from Greece. There's a very high tendency that the Suvlaki is gonna be great in Greece. I'm not saying that the souvlaki outside of Greece is not nice because there's a huge Greek communities everywhere. If you have some equipment, if you've got some skills, if you sprinkle it with a little bit of love and it'll be fine. You will make great souvlaki, but this place is another level. Their pita bread is so soft, the lamb is so soft, everything was so well done with some char on it. It's just fantabulous and it costs two and a half euros. This is not just some skills or some sprinkle of love that we're talking about. This is a whole barrel of love dumped into the souvlaki. And I went to Monastiraki Market. <laughs> Probably butchered that name, but yeah. So I went to a plaza and I saw like men and men are holding like their pinky and dancing together. And I was like, oh, well, this is such an open country. I like it. Only to find out that they are like um, having flags of some faces. So I don't know whether it's for a political party or whether it's for some sort of ideology. I don't know, thought that was cool to see. So that time it was like four or five o'clock and I told myself, okay, let's get a good sunset view of the city and Acropolis from a rooftop bar. The first cocktail bar or rooftop bar that Google suggested was A for Athens. I went up to the bar. Initially, I just wanted some sneaky photos and videos without paying and leave, but like, after looking at the view, I'm like, oh, I'm gonna stay here for a while. So I ordered an espresso martini. It was so professional. He made it with care and put a lot of effort in it and gave me like these extra bits of liquid in the strainer to me as well. And then I picked 
the most perfect start and is to put on my espresso martini which it was not as perfect as I thought it would be because it lacked one but anyways it made for a great photo and he like fully spray perfume on my espresso martini I mean it's definitely not perfume but he sprayed something on there it was definitely a sprinkle of love with a great view of the city with a great sunset that eight euros was worth it and you know what's even more worth it I met a friend from Cyprus and a friend from Malta and I've never met friends from those two countries before I was very shy so I asked them hey can you take a photo of me with the city and they're like ah oh, of course and fortunately they spoke fluent English so we connected after that we were speaking they were like asking where I'm from what am I doing why am I here why am I alone so we made pretty good friends we had a lot of conversation going on we exchanged contacts and they were like hey so tonight we're going to the club we don't know where, we don't know when, we don't know how But do you want to come? And I was like, yes, I'm gonna go to a club But I had to go back to the hostel to do something else And I was like, okay, that's fine, I will go grab dinner So they went, and I went down from the rooftop bar after the sunset And I walked around the plaza, went onto the restaurant strips And look around because I was a bit hungry But I still had got some food in me That's the thing that I like to do best not to be too hungry when you're looking for a restaurant because you will just settle for whatever you see first and then I met another traveler from a hostel as well and she's from Argentina we briefly spoke when I was um, out of the shower when I was in hostel and they were like hey do you want to have dinner together and she's like oh okay let's do it I selected this Greek restaurant for an entree for a main and for a complimentary drink it was just 15 euros so the Maltese and the Cypriot texted me and said hey we're going to this place do you still want to come are you still keen and I'm like of course I'm still keen and he's like great let's meet up at the hostel and we can go for some free drinking so we went to the supermarket to get some beers we drank at the plaza and when we were done with the beers when the supermarket was closed it was like 10 p.m. there was still a lot of people there went to the bar hang out like, until 12 and then we went to the club which didn't have a huge line which was great but inside though there were so many people it was probably one of the biggest clubs that I've been to with like red floors red lights where everyone looks a bit more sexy you know there's like hanging stuff for the DJ to play music there's a few poles up there for people to dance on and there's like a huge center dance floor there's like sofas and couches for people to sit and there's a huge bar at the middle and a huge bar at the side as well and I was like is this a dream? And then I look at the prices of the beer and I'm like, okay, this is definitely not a dream because this is Parisian prices. It was so expensive and I'm just like, hey, we need a strategy. So I talked to them and I'm like, do you guys want to share a drink or something? Maybe we can share a bottle or something. <laughs> They're like, oh, we like you already. So we got a bottle of vodka for 60 euros instead of like one shot for 8 euros. The thing that I really like about that club is if you get a 60 euro bottle of vodka, you get three bottles of mixer, you get lime, you get lemon, you get a lot of things for free as well. So we had like a small booth that's for us. And when we are in need of alcohol, we just go back to that booth and the lady just know who we are and we just pour out drinks for us. And the good thing about that place, that booth, is because the music is loud enough for you to like, you know, get closer to the ear and like, hey, blah, blah, blah. but also it's not loud enough for you to have to shout. So, you know, less sexy. We partied so much until like 4 a.m. And then we're like, okay, let's go home. Started walking home and I just figured out it was the stupidest thing in the world. I was alone. And from that club to my hostel takes around 15 minutes. I couldn't get an Uber ride. So I'm just like, eh, I'm just gonna walk. I saw a little scooter at the side of the street. And because it was pitch black, there's no lights whatsoever. And there is a lot of apartment buildings, which I figure out it's probably where people live. I got on the scooter and I'm like, I'm gonna attract some attention here if I'm walking alone, drunk, so I'm gonna have to go back. So I didn't know how to pay because I was very influenced by alcohol. And obviously if you don't pay, the scooter would just make a lot of annoying, alarming sound to make you go off the scooter because like I said, there's no one around me it's pitch black and because the goddamn scooter makes so much sound I was attracting a lot of attention if there were anyone there I gotta run I gotta run 
So I ran back to my hostel because I think that I was gonna get robbed. But because I was so frugal, I didn't want to pay for the taxi. I didn't want the taxi to overcharge me. So I walked home because I was like, just 15, 20 minutes. I'm very glad I didn't get robbed. So that's it for today, guys. That's my adventure in Athens. So if you want to know more about cities and countries that I've traveled to, if you want to know more about food, if you want to know more about languages that I'm passionate about, I post a new video every Thursday on food, on languages, on countries and cities that I've been to and my experience in these places. If you want to know more about them, please subscribe so you can get notified every Thursday. Thank you for watching. Ciao, ciao!